Hi, this is Dr. Steven Seiler. I am finally back. It's been a while since I made a video for this YouTube channel. Uh, but I'm not only back, but I have with me my daughter, Siren Amelia Seiler. How are you Hi. doing? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Currently struggling with a little injury, so that has given me more time to yeah, think about running, which led me to this analysis of Molly Saddle's training. Um, after the Olympic marathon, which was kind of the catalyzer for my interest in, okay, what made her perform at this level and uh, get the bronze in Tokyo. Yeah, because she punched above her weight, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. She came onto the scene, you knew about her. Uh, she's had an extended career, you know, as a high school athlete, as a collegiate athlete. She's had struggles. Uh, she's had quite a story. Uh, but in recent, this is only her third marathon, and she's on Strava. Yeah, one of the few top elite uh, runners, I would say, from the U.S. who actually posts everything of her training and uh, in pretty detailed manner. So uh, it's easy to get a good overview of how she trains and with a little bit of stalking, <laughs> I would say, into every <laughs> session. You get a good uh, view of actually what pace she runs at. And from there, I kind of figured out her intensity distribution and main characteristics of her training. So I think what you're hearing is that uh, my daughter has inherited some of my geekiness and my interest in training. And uh, so here we go. Let's get started. We're going to jump to a little presentation. And so we want to show you, you know, what uh, this is her, her uh, Twitter is by golly Molly, I believe it's called. So we're going to try to dig into the weeds a little bit about how she pulled this off. Uh, so this should be fun. Let's see uh, where we go next. A little, little bit about her training philosophy, I think, is reasonable. And you know of her well. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about how, how you perceive her training philosophy? Um, after what I've understood and also what she has said herself in some podcasts is she is very focused on mileage and her uh, and her coach's training philosophy is to build a strong base and then add workouts on top of it. So first build mileage and strength and then intensify with hard sessions. Um, and also from her past, she struggled with an eating disorder for some years and also a lot of injuries. And she had to take a huge step back and really focus on becoming a healthy human first and then really try to uh, peak after that as a runner. So healthy human first, pro runner second, I think is a good take home <laughs> message here. And um, yeah. Uh, she's at a point now where she is able to train at a very high level. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good start. Let's, so let's see what we see from the actual marathon. This is the, the top 10 results. I believe about 60 athletes started uh, the marathon. We know the background for Tokyo was that it was, it was warm. I wouldn't say it was super hot. Fortunately, they, uh, the, you know, the race start was early enough. But it was, what, 28, 30 degrees C? Yeah. Something like that. So this was not going to, going to be a record race as far as speed. Uh, you know, finals in the Olympics generally are not. But what we've done here is just show the, P, the personal best for the top 10 and then their actual Tokyo time. And if you look on the far right side of this little table, you see the gap. And of these 10 athletes, it was very clear Molly was the athlete who ran closest to her PB. Uh, you, you've kind of gone into the weeds on that as far as, she, you know, she, the PB was from London, right? Mm. And uh, 2020. In 2020. So she's new in the marathon game. Uh, maybe that 225 is something that she's good for a couple minutes faster but still, I think the take-home message from this table is, is that for whatever reason, she handled the heat pretty well, she paced herself well, she did not collapse, and she stayed in the hunt the whole way. Yeah. 
And eventually, a lot of these athletes you see, like Chumba, Mayo, uh, Ichiyama, uh, Rosa, they were in that lead. They were in the top six with with 10K to go. Yeah. So, but then, then the big... The race s- happens after 30, 35 kilometers. That's right. So, uh... so that's the background, is that uh, she raced with, with athletes. This is the world record holder. Bridget Kolsky and Bridget, Bridget didn't win. She actually lost to her, essentially her helper runner who yep. was handing her bottles, as you she said. Was. Yeah. So it was a very, very cool uh, marathon to watch. And yeah. Okay. Well, let's get moving here. Let's see. So this is like I was saying, if you see closely, you actually see there's, there's, I guess, seven runners in this picture. If we look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is pretty late in the in the going, and and still all of these are in metal contention. Yeah. Saul Petter, she ends up with a stomach cramp and ends up 66th. The others were more competitive, but they all fell back except for Koskai, uh, Seidel, and Kipchichir. Uh Those were our three that ended up uh, closing out for the medals. Now, you, you went in and did this analysis, so you're going to have to explain it. And what are, what are, what's available on Strava for you? Um, well, this was actually from World Athletics. Uh, so I just went in and looked at her, all of her personal bests from 1500 to the marathon and got a good overview of her uh pace averages for these distances and how her 1500 meter PR is compared to her marathon PR. And what we've seen is that uh, she gets better as the distance goes further. So um, you don't necessarily have to be a top caliber 1500 meter runner to become one of the best marathon runners. Yeah, and, and why we're interested in that is because obviously the, the typical pathway for runners from age group, you know, the younger athletes, they run shorter distances because the longer distances are not even contested. Yeah. So it looks like you need to do first the 15 and then the 3,000 and then you build your and way up progress. and progress. And, yeah. and of course, high school careers and college careers, typically that's the way that yeah. works. But you personally, you didn't, you were a dancer and so you're kind of coming in uh at the 10k point yeah. i skipped uh, the first uh, 10 years in running you know i uh, yeah it's that's what made it interesting for me to see as well um yeah and a lot of recreational runners yeah. do that as well so it's interesting uh but but here are the paces you use the paces for intensity distribution right yeah. because heart rate data is not available very trustworthy way on Strava and we do not know her max heart rate so right and I just put a little asterisk there when I looked at it because I've done an analysis and and when we've looked at athletes who have competed in distances in from 5,000 to the marathon in the same season and we did an analysis on this we found that the typical or the average difference was 13 percent between 5k pace and marathon so it's never very it's never huge, but in Molly's case, it's even it's even less, which makes sense because she's relatively better in those longer distances. Mm. Uh, and then I guess from a physiological point of view, you can kind of say that this is kind of VO2 max pace somewhere in here and threshold pace is somewhere down here and then zone you know slightly above threshold zone four in that typical five zone would be for molly somewhere around what the 320 mark or so i would say so i i i believe a um, threshold effort will feel much like half marathon effort and she did a lot of her uh training before the olympics on in altitude in flagstaff so then the pace will naturally be a little bit slower. So I think around the 320 mark is, is a good estimate of her threshold pace, yeah. what she defines as threshold on Strava. Right. So here's this, this is heart rate data from her. We don't know her max heart rate. So we're just, you know, this is full disclosure, but 
as far as you can tell, you really went into every workout. And so when she's running easy, as she calls it, where was she in this heart rate range? Well, I mostly looked at her paces, which we will see later for all easy runs or workouts. And, and what is very interesting is that her easy run paces is often somewhere between 430 to 5 bank minutes per kilometer pace, which is for most people a very um, easy pace to actually hold. And uh, if they're trained runners, they're, yeah. yeah. But, but often, or it just says that she runs her easy runs very easy right. for her And she was level. at these heart rates. I mean, yeah. she was. Uh, and you see, zone one. <laughs> yeah, so she, that's a big, that's, you know, that's 60 beats at least up yeah. to her max. So, so easy is easy. When mm -hmm. Molly runs easy, she, or says she's running easy, she's running easy. Now, here's the volume you went in and looked at every week. The, the last nine weeks so we're focusing on those last nine weeks before tokyo mm. this is kilometers um yeah what do we see we see a very high mileage and very consistently high mileage um yeah she runs two times a day every day mostly and uh, she does two workouts a week and a long run a day, um, day. two two workouts a, oh two two, two workouts, workouts a yeah week and one uh long run uh, some weeks very marathon specific higher pace so it's a hard long run uh, other weeks maintains the volume for the long run but cuts the intensity to just easy pace uh, but yeah what we see is just she's able to hold very consistently high mileage week after week without getting seriously injured which i think is one of the main reasons for this performance right um, and because yeah. that hasn't always been the case she's had her many injuries and Absolutely. so this was the key behind any medal usually is a period of, of training where the injuries were kept at bay or yeah. either didn't happen or she probably had some niggles of but course. but she was able to run consistently yeah. um and when we just as a little reminder when we say when you say workouts what you're saying is not is is specific uh, key uh, sessions yeah. hard like sessions. hard sessions i would say above zone three zone four uh, so yeah right zone so three, lot four, lots four. of running she probably runs about 12 times a week or maybe yeah, almost she, 14. Uh, yeah she runs mostly two a day every day maybe except the long run day on sunday which we will see she often uh, collects 35 kilometers plus for one of these Mar very marathon specific long runs uh, and takes almost no rest days so yeah she's able to no planned rest no. days no and then the other thing we can just say is here's the typical we, we call this the taper mm -hmm. uh lots of research on the taper as you know how pro how should it be organized how progressive can it be so she kind of starts a little easy but then the last two weeks of the taper she really cuts the volume so this you know, this was the week of the the, um, the, mar the yeah, marathon. Yeah, it was so. on the seventh of August, I believe, and uh, it was Sunday was the the eighth of August that week. So that uh, load is before those the, days. So those that's days. like Monday to Friday yeah. of that week. So she did run, but she cut it yeah. way back. All right. So let's keep going here. Uh, some basic structure. You you kind of laid this out. This is what. Yeah. it looks like yeah so i went into even before these nine weeks uh, i looked at most sessions from all of uh, 2021 <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i see a basic pattern of tuesday and friday as workouts and uh, hard sessions that is and uh, sunday long run and but some days or weeks she will push back a workout to wednesday if needed and adjust uh, Friday, Sunday after that. But I think the basic thing here is that she is able to trust her body, listen to her body, not follow a uh, prescription to the detail, which is a very, very important part of this training journey, I would say. Yeah, because, uh, you know, being systematic, being being kind of disciplined, disciplined is a good physical, thing, yeah. but it can go too far. Absolutely. And you've, you've experienced that. I think most yeah. athletes have. 
maybe particularly a lot of female athletes because they're particularly good at being structured, I would almost argue, if I was going to generalize. Mm -hmm. But she shows this little this balance between discipline and continuity mm -hmm. and then some flexibility. Yeah. That, and, uh, and that's a that take is, home for you. Yeah, for me uh, especially. And uh, she's been very open about all of this. And I think there is a fine line between some uh, obsessive behavior mm -hmm. and being able to, to train very consistently in a very smart way. Yeah. Now you went in, you, the, among these nine weeks, we picked out a couple of weeks as, as representative or just mm -hmm. to exemplify what it looks like uh, in detail. So if you want to walk through this, what, what do we see? Yeah, we see um, the basic structure here. This was actually a race week, so a little bit different. But as you can see, she keeps uh, two training sessions a day every day. Uh, Sunday here is not a long run day because of the race. Um, but yeah, Monday is uh, too easy and she will often add in some strides. We also see the pace here, uh, 4.50 and 5.05 minutes per kilometer, which I personally thought was one of the more interesting things because that is around the pace that I actually run on easy runs. So that just says something about how it's not dangerous to actually run your easy runs very easy because that is how you really recover for these hard efforts. Right. And, and with the volume, she's getting a lot yeah. of volume still. So we have to remember that that training stimulus is, is intensity times duration. Yeah. So she's saying, hey, I'm going to work. I'm going to keep the intensity low, but I'm going to get the duration. Yeah. And, and as a duration. reference, your 10K is a couple minutes slower than hers or two and a half. So so easy is easy for her, you know, uh, and, and I think that's, again, a take home. And then she used mm -hmm. this race as a workout. Yeah. Uh, this is was within 10 seconds of her PR, right? She's a 32 blank, uh, 3202, I think, is what yeah. you said was her yeah, PR. Yeah, that's what his PR is on uh, from World Athletics. Yeah. So here's another. Now we go mid in, midway into that nine-week mm -hmm. cycle. Uh, and here you see some, some sessions to talk about. And this is more of, I would say, a more representative marathon type week. Uh, so we have the same uh, structure here uh, and her easy runs are often between uh, I would say around 90 minutes in the morning and she does what she calls a shakeout in the evening uh, around 30 to 40 minutes and here she has done a track session um, and I think um, this is around her um, 10k pace or yeah um so she doesn't do very much uh, speed work or intense track sessions she maintains a high volume at a com controlled uh, high intensity um throughout this build yeah and the other thing she does is she uses these progressive runs which you also like and the kenyans are known for the east african runners do a lot of progressive runs start easy and just slowly build and build and build uh and so it seems like that's one of the ways that she gets both some intensity but also kind of puts it into the framework of of getting ready to run 42 mm -hmm. kilometers yeah because you have to remember that even though, for example, in one of these progressive runs, when you run at a pace for a certain amount of time, the longer you are able to extend, uh, the higher the intensity will be, regardless of your pace. Uh, so yeah, the internal you intensity. Get to stimulate, yeah. yeah, and yeah. also, of course, very marathon specific, all of this, but yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so you just, you threw in some key workouts, just what were some of the ones, and, and she did do some, you might call them double hard sessions, but for her, hard was doing a lot of work at threshold pace. Yeah, and what I thought was, because threshold uh, as a term is a pretty confusing term, many people use it differently, uh, but what I see here is her threshold is around half marathon uh, effort or uh, pace so i would believe it is around 90 percent plus minus of max heart rate 
mm. um, as an estimation. Um, so her hard sessions will probably fa- fall into high zone three, zone four. Mm. Um, so she doesn't do a lot of anaerobic work. That's that's a, an important thing here. Um, or VO two max or VO2 intervals. Max intervals. Yeah. No. Um, basically none yeah. of that as no. far as i could tell yeah no she she as we will see she adds in some uh some 200 meter sessions like uh actually just in between uh, these long workout days and also some strides some short hill repeats uh i think for this neuromuscular stimuli and um yeah, it's able to keep some quickness in her legs through right. this build on very high mileage. Right. And then here are some of these, uh, you know, so threshold sessions doing uh, 800, 1,000 repeats and that. And then you have these progressive runs that were also a fixture that were kind of building up towards mm-hmm. her marathon. So you showed, you identified some of these sessions just so people can see. Yeah. Uh, what it looked like a bit of a mix of miles and kilometers yeah. here <laughs> but I've written everything in as you see in these right. but so. we've got people listening that, that <laughs> some of them are kilometer people and some of them are mile people so yeah. that's uh, and, and here's the, remember the, the conversion if you're yeah. confused but I suspect <laughs> most people watching this kind of know that conversion yeah so yeah <laughs> So, and then she did, here's a few of these hard, you said she did a little bit of speed work or, yeah. you know, speed work in, in, in quotes, I guess we'd say, but, but mm-hmm. to keep a little bit of snap in the legs, yeah. uh, as you were saying, and, and, and interspersing these on the easy days. Yeah. And also I believe this, uh, the last seven by 200 meter session was actually three days before the Tokyo marathon, mm. the final one we see here. And. And what I think is interesting to see is that these uh, quote unquote speed sessions are not actually run at a very fast pace, uh, but enough to yeah, go far above marathon pace. Right, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the kind of the, the deep dive. And, and I guess if we're going to summarize, you, you've, it's, these are the terms you picked as kind of key characteristics for Molly's training? Yeah, um, I would say, yeah, flexibility, autonomy, enjoyment, consistency, high mileage, controlled hit and altitude training are good characteristics. Uh, she is flexible with training sessions. Uh, she does not follow the plan to the detail. Um, she's able to listen to her body uh, and adjust based on it. Uh, an autonomy she has said herself that she has quite a bit of uh, um, authorship of her own training but John Green is her coach and gives her her plan and they have a good cooperation here Mm. and enjoyment is very important you really do have to enjoy running and, and she says she loves to run she does not have to gear up for her second session in the afternoon, uh, which is obviously a big plus when you're supposed to log over 200 kilometers per week. Um, but also consistency, I would say, for everyone here. Uh, the main importance is to stay injury free. If you cannot make it to the start line, all of the training you did two months earlier really doesn't mean anything. Um, and also, yeah, ghost together with the high mileage you Mm. have to know your limits but kind of ride that upper limit without surpassing it i think is a a good thing Uh, yeah and she now we got to say it maybe this kind of high mileage is not for everyone but she she thrives on it and but the one of the ways she thrives on it Mm. is by controlling the high intensity yeah yeah Uh, so by not adding more hard sessions throughout the week. She she does some double workout days, double threshold days, but but basically these are um, sessions that just gives her more volume, but are not above any zone four right. <laughs> area. And, and, so and, so and, it's possible. Yeah. To and that seems to make that. a difference for a lot yeah. of people. We've seen this in a lot of athletes in different sports is that, you know, controlling how, how deep you go into those 
into those really high intensity sessions impacts recovery. Yeah. The other, the last little thing is just full disclosure. Obviously, altitude training was part of her last nine weeks. She did some. She was in Arizona Flagstaff, in Flagstaff, Flagstaff. Uh, and that seems to be uh, very common in pretty much endurance athletes across the spectrum. Is is once you get to a high enough level, altitude training is probably part of the prescription uh, at some point. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think we see all elite athletes benefit from altitude training. Yeah. And one quote here I would like to say that she actually has said herself, it does not have to be pretty, you just have to finish it. And that goes for all of these hard sessions. Um, often we as runners, uh, everyone wants to finish uh, workouts and hit perfect splits and... Uh, yeah, we tend to be a little bit obsessive about the details, but I think when you're really training at a high level and you just have to really get into that mentality of the main importance is to just finish the session. And regardless of how pretty it is, how fast the last splits are, because that is the mentality that will take you further and give you that confidence to build upwards, really yeah. regardless of level. Well, I think that's a great way to finish this. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about this before. It's not the epic workouts that, that build success. It's the continuity. It's the do, doing the work. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Molly Seidel is just a great example of that. So hope you enjoyed this analysis. It was fun for me to, to work with my daughter. It's, it's encouraging. And she's about to go back to Oslo and, and get back in her own running training. So inspirational for her, inspirational for me, and hopefully useful for you guys. Thanks.